Hey guys, good mark is here. And today we're just gonna take a look at a tea set I have that's pretty uh, pretty complete here. I don't usually find this many pieces in a tea set, but today is one of those exceptions. And well this company is not it's not the most rare company on earth, but it is it is uncommon to find pieces by this by this uh, maker. And they seem to have two different lines of, uh, of tea sets. One, they kind of have this pumpkin or pumpkin finial looking thing. Kind of looks like the winter, but it's not. Or maybe it's cherries or something like the, the finial looks like fruit or, or some kind of vine or something like that. So that's the um, most best selling pattern of, of theirs, I think. And then there's this one. Um, also, I think they're going, they're going for pineapple or something like that. I don't know for sure. But anyway, so this is Birmingham Silver Company. And they were, they were, used to be Gold Federer. Gold Federer, I think. Gold Federer. Or, that, that sounds reasonable. And they had this, a similar logo like with the, with the kind of like the crown. I think that they used a bigger one. On their pieces, gold feather anyway, and they had a similar, like cursive, cursive writing for their um, maker's mark. But anyway, um, and it's one of the most um, common silver plated sets that that show silver on copper on the bottom, and I really like silver on copper because copper is. Well, it's definitely the best base metal for silver plate. It looks the best when when you start to show a uh, base metal and and the plating rubs off. But also, you know, copper is the most uh, most valuable base metal of uh, silver plate. It definitely shows a higher quality uh, product. I I believe it's nice and hard, um, nice solid pieces, and uh, one day. Uh, if copper ever has a squeeze or, or is more valuable as well, uh, these these pieces are definitely going to increase in value as well. Academy is also another company that you would look for if you want to find um, silver plated copper. They also have marked uh, silver on copper uh, for Academy silver plate. And the Academy looks it's pretty similar to this. They have mostly basic basic patterns as well, kind of like that mid-century modern clean look. Anyway, uh, yeah, we've got the tilting teapot here. There's so many pieces because, well, you've got oh, you've got the complete set here. One is a coffee pot, one is a teapot. I don't know which one is which. It doesn't really matter to me that much. But the tilting teapot, however, is the rare piece and the, the valuable piece in the, the lot here. Unfortunately, there is damage, and you guys can, couldn't know it either until you, until you actually took a, took a look at the back here. Unfortunately, this was detached. See this this very thin, thin piece right here. This was soldered onto the side here, and that's all that it was attached. That to me is kind of poor, poor uh, design. Honestly, I think that's that's kind of sloppy of, of them, because it's very very easy to detach this, and. So now my options are sell it as is and uh, re and uh, be very transparent about the damage or we could repair it if I knew how to and I might uh, try to learn again. I bought a I bought some flux and and I bought some solder and I bought a torch but the torch that I bought is atrocious so I haven't been able to learn much of anything. Or I could buy a single piece, the the tilting tea set teapot, and try to replace the piece. That any of those options I think are valid, but right now I don't really want to learn. I don't really have the time to learn how to solder. Plus, it would take a while to become proficient at it. So I'm either going to list the the set as as is, and tell them that this needs to be repaired or 
most likely I'm going to look for a replacement for this. And they're on they're on the market. It's kind of hard to find them, but it's not like this is a hundred dollar piece or anything. Far from it. Probably you would look be looking at it around twenty five dollars to replace the piece and then probably fifteen dollars shipping. So you're in for forty, which kind of sucks because the entire thing I'm in for fifty. <laughs> That's why I bought it because it was so cheap. I didn't really want it because it's kind of bulky and take me a while to do a note listing but yeah there's profit in this and for definitely because of a full set and we got the full set except for the the tray full set is like 200 bucks 150 let's see I would I would say that each of the each of the teapots retail for around 30 bucks so we got 60 here so probably another 30 bucks for the creamer and sugar bowl and then maybe 30 bucks for this because it's a this is a waste bowl and that's kind of harder to find a little bit more more rare than than just the creamer and sugar so you got the waste bowl and then the tilting tea set teapot like he said i would say 40 bucks for the tilting teapot and then another 30 dollars if you find the one for this if you find the stand and then it's even got the burner and the burner actually opens up and it even has the burner um, mm -mm. and I broke it fantastic that didn't take much did it well used to have a burner with the much longer Wow, it is so brittle, guys. Holy smokes. Is it brittle. Well, if you wanted to use it, I think you'd want to buy a new wick. But the original wick is broken. I think it probably was broken. That's why that happened so easily. But anyway, original burner. You probably want to replace the wick if you wanted to actually use it. But who's ever going to actually use this the way it used to be? Done. You would take the water, put it in the teapot, and then use the wick. We used to not before we had stoves that had gas or or electric, and an easy way to boil water. You would use gas in the burner, and that's how you would have your tea. Just kind of um, kind of complicated to to tell you the truth. Nowadays, uh, things are a bit easier. Don't need the burner, but it is included, and that gives it some value, I would imagine. If you want to invest in metal, I think a tea teapot would be a very fantastic way to do it because you get, and this is, this is kind of a way that of thinking that people just don't think about. But there actually is silver on these pieces, not just. Oh yeah, there's silver on silver plate, of course there's, but there's actually a, a decent amount of silver. Not Right now it's not a lot, but yeah, so you might get half an ounce of silver from each teapot. We've got three of them. You've got the bur burner and the, the stand, probably another half an ounce. So you were looking at two ounces of silver that's plated these, and I'm just estimating for, based on what I've known from scrapping and then maybe like a another ounce from all three of of these pieces the the tea set the I mean the sugar bowl creamer and the waste bowl so we're looking at maybe two and a half to three ounces of silver that that was plated on these pieces and then we're looking at a pure copper as a base metal so like what two and a half pounds would be Two and a half pounds or five pounds, and then maybe like this is a pound, six, six and a half pounds, eight, nine, nine pounds of the whole set weighs, and maybe two and a half to three ounces of silver. So, materialistically, this is not a an irrelevant amount of metal we're looking at, and if you ever have a a metal shortage or metal squeeze and 
apparently, I think it's possible that that this does happen because of increased metal demand due to uh, more more electrification. They want to go green. You're gonna need way more metal in order to do that. Uh, the the grid has to be updated as well. You need to use tons of metal for for anything copper related wiring, all that. They probably use cop silver. They use silver in um, any kind of electronics. They use silver in solar panels. So you're gonna need a lot more metal. And every time that that a metal metal is gonna squeeze, maybe people who happen to have this set, uh, they might send their pieces to a scrapyard if they ever get into um, financial difficulty. That's an easy way to make a couple, couple bucks, I guess. Especially if, if you do have a metal squeeze. Maybe you're looking at $10 copper, then the scrap mat yard will give you $5 a pound for this. So we're looking at $45, $50. <laughs> Sending you to the scrap yard, that's definitely possible. Of course, they wouldn't give you any of the silver on um, on the pieces, and that that to me is a scam because the silver on these pieces are is actually relevant, regardless of what people think. There is a relevant amount of silver on silver plate. So, yeah, they they melt it down. You're gonna get less of these. Set like this isn't exactly rare territory, but you're you're edging towards that. You know what? What used to be common. Yesterday is rare today, and these these tea sets are kind of itching towards this because you're looking at pieces that would have been made in like the 40s, 50s, 60s, been here a little while. Or, you know, they're edging towards being antiques. So, yeah, I like this stuff. I just need to sell it, make a profit. At the 50 bucks I spent, I do think that I can make a profit. Alright, that's it for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little, little lesson about the silver plated tea set. My ranting thoughts about, about this. I, I think I need to replace this or fix it. I guess I could look into buying another torch and learning again, but yeah. Probably just replace it instead. Yeah. That's it for today's video guys. Good marks, get out.